Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. You may have seen some charts posted online which suggest the potential for cold and snowy weather across the UK during the middle to the end of November. And in this video, we're going to look at the actual chances of this happening, the current situation on any cold weather, and also look at how and why the, those re the chances are the way they are, essentially. Starting off though, we'll look at the actual runs which people were showing. And this is a GFS one from this morning, which indicates uh, around the middle to the end of the month, a fairly robust northerly moving over the UK and Ireland and bringing snow to a fairly large area with multiple different uh, lows and small disturbances, showers as well, uh, with some fairly significant accumulations. And naturally, uh, we love the snow in the UK because we don't really get much of it. And so a lot of people are posting this and getting excited and that kind of thing. But the most important thing is this is a single model run at one and a half to two weeks in the future and of course in the weather world that's a very long time period and the models are often basically they get it wrong more often than not when you're looking this far out and the uncertainty in the forecast is very very high and while it's true that as you get pro uh, as you get closer in time the models do have do become more accurate and they are often accurate within a week but the situation at one and a half to two weeks out is that they're pretty much meaningless unless you're trying to get a broad sense of how the pattern might change. In terms of the actual risk of cold, having said what I just said, as in this is unlikely to occur, there is the possibility for colder than average temperatures. Bear in mind that does not necessarily mean cold and snow, it just means colder than the average. And we can figure out why if we look at this pressure chart from the European model here. So the last week we've had high pressure to the east and that's been driving the gloomy, dry, uh, and cloudy weather, also fairly chilly in some parts across the UK and Ireland. But as we move into the coming week, that's going to shift to the northeast, and that's indicated by this pink showing above average pressure just to the north uh, west, sorry, northwest uh, of the UK. Um, however, some models suggest that this will continue, and actually, by the second week after now, so basically the 18th and 25th of November, that high pressure could move up to Greenland and Iceland, which could um, bring down a northerly airflow <clears throat> with the risk of cold and snow across the UK and Ireland. Now, first things first, you have to bear in mind that this is an average. And if we look at the ensemble, which gives kind of a broad range of outcomes from the European model here, uh, sorry, this is the GFS model, my bad, uh, for London, you can see that the spread uh, after the 17th or the 18th of November, while the average does indicate a decrease in temperatures, you can see the spread is very large. And for you to get cold and snow widely, you're looking at probably below 5 degrees. And actually, the majority of um, ensemble members have temperatures not that cold. So, I mean, on the one hand, you could say, well, this shows any outcome is possible. And that is true. So I'm not, I'm not trying to say this is not going to happen, a cold outcome. But the current situation is because it's so uh, such a large range of outcomes it's just naturally uncertain and when things are uncertain it's very hard to pinpoint a particular outcome and say this is going to happen that being said this is a fairly promising um, chart for people that like cold weather because uh, to have an average at this kind of time range showing northerly winds is definitely not a bad thing and also it's somewhat supported by the background conditions of weather around the world and here I'm going to show you the MJO this is pretty much an index which tracks the um, position of convection which is thunderstorms <clears throat> around the tropics and the different phases which you can see on the side in these different segments of the map or the chart sorry indicate the kind of location of the um, of where the thunderstorm activity is occurring as you can see uh, denoted by these kind of captions here um, and you may think this seems really obscure, but actually this can impact the weather in the UK and it can change the position of high and low pressure. Now, we shouldn't use this super directly and say, oh, phase eight means exactly this is going to happen. But it can be a general indicator and it can also back up the computer outputs. And if you look at um, the phases of interest, the main one is phase seven and eight which show high pressure to the north of the UK at the high latitudes, which generally indicates winds from the north uh, or the east, which is typically good for cold and snow. And then in terms of phase one and two, you can see those typically indicate low pressure 
which is westerlies, more mild and even stormy. And if you look at what's already happened in the past few days, the beginning of November, we've been in phase eight and are now transitioning into phase one. And it's worth saying that the phases have a delay of two to sometimes as much as kind of three or even four weeks occasionally. So it will take time for these general patterns to set in. And if you add kind of two weeks on to the first few days of November, that gets you into the period of the 18th to the 25th, which is phase eight. Uh, and this generally supports what the European model is showing. So this might seem quite a good sign. And to be honest, it's definitely not a bad sign and it definitely supports below average temperatures. So that's kind of a positive for the cold lovers. We are potentially looking at northerly winds, which tend to bring snow. But this is where you kind of get a bit more uh, less exciting in my opinion and that is that cold and below average temperatures does not mean significant cold and snow and if I take a look at this kind of situation here which is for the 17th and 18th this would still be a northerly wind this would still be below average and would feel cold but it would not be cold enough for snow or would not be considered a proper cold spell and in fact you can see, just see it would be gloomy um, chilly with rain showers so in my opinion, this is probably a more likely outcome, especially when you consider in the long range, these weather models often have an over amplification bias, which essentially means they think the high pressure will be stronger than it actually is. And what you tend to see is in more often than not, the big high pressures up north, uh, as they get closer in time, they're watered down and what was initially a, a strong cold northerly becomes a northwesterly. And you've actually already seen this happening. If I go to yesterday's 12 o'clock run, uh, you can see this actually at, had, at this time, sorry, had a northerly and a northeasterly with a snow risk across large parts of the UK and Ireland. And in fact, I, I think we're already starting to see the pattern be shifted back or watered down. Uh, I mean, it's still worth keeping an eye on because, like I said, the wide range of possibilities does mean that any outcome is on the table. And also, the phase eight does suggest that the uh, general situation would favour a northerly or maybe even a northeasterly. But my kind of gut feeling at this time, and I know gut feeling is not a weather model, but my gut feeling at this time is probably for more of a... Uh, watered down, chilly, but low risk of snow. However, that can change. And especially if you look at other models like the European model, also was showing similar things. And so were the, so was the Canadian model as well. I just think <clears throat> when the charts are saying cold and snowy at the very end of the run, you just can't take it with so much confidence. And when considering kind of past trends, um, I mean, quite often there are multiple times in any given winter where we'll see charts like this at long range. And then in most of those uh, scenarios, it just gets watered down. And so when you kind of look at the average of the ensemble, I think this is probably the most likely outcome. And the more unlikely outcome or the extreme outcome is a cold and snowy spell. So it is possible. <clears throat> I'm not trying to rule it out. And I will update you if by if we're kind of a week away and the charts are still showing a big cold and snowy spell or a northeasterly hitting UK but I'm just going to say don't get your hopes up too much at this point because it's uncertain and the past tends to suggest that these setups are not as exciting as they initially seem. On the other side you never really know all outcomes are on the table and the background pattern would not rule out a cold spell. That being said any cold spell is, is likely to be very short lived because, because you can see, sorry, that the MGO fairly quickly is transitioning to phase one and two, which if you look at on this chart are driven by low pressure and southwesterlies. And in fact, if I look at some of the GFS runs, you can already see that at the end of them, they go back to a westerly. So colder weather below average temperatures, in my opinion, is looking fairly likely. Significant cold and snow is a possibility but probably unlikely and any cold spell will be short-lived and will probably be moving to unsettled weather by uh, the end of November into December but of course I will update you if things change and you never know what can happen so anyway thank you very much for watching and have a great day everyone bye bye